that day I live in a dream Welcome to Only Trying to Help, the podcast where we try to help you be helpful to other people. My name is Dr. Kate Watson, and if you're listening to this show today, I assume it's because you're interested in being helpful to people in your life, your friends, your family members, your coworkers, your neighbors, your spouse, your children, whomever it may be. Sometimes we work really hard to be helpful, and we wind up resentful about it. And I think there are perhaps a number of reasons for this. Sometimes we are giving too much. We end up exhausted and resentful. Sometimes we don't feel appreciated. We end up abused and resentful. Sometimes our help isn't received and put to good use. And we don't see progress in the person who we're trying to help. And then we take that personally. And we end up hurt and resentful. I've been hearing about resentment a lot lately. So I have a friend, let's let's call her Mina. Her husband's really struggling with his mental health. He has terrible anxiety, bouts of depression, and she's trying really hard to be supportive. When he has an anxiety attack, she helps him through it. Even if they have to cancel really important plans that she was looking forward to. She participates in his therapy sessions, or at least some of them, because she cares a great deal about being supportive of his needs. Most of the time, she's happy to be there for him. Most of the time, her heart goes out to him because she knows how much he's really suffering and how hard it is for him to fight through this pain that he feels. Most of the time, she admires him for working so hard to overcome his anxiety and depression. And even when he's at his worst, she can often find the compassion to to look up to him for not quitting on himself and on his family. And I'm sure you've noticed that I kept saying most of the time, you know, every once in a while, she just feels, I don't know, kind of like empty of compassion, maybe like she's fighting alone in this battle. And she's my friend. So she calls me from time to time to say things like, you know, Kate, sometimes I just feel like I'm working harder than he is. And she gets particularly upset when his depression gets bad. I think, I think she feels more useful when he's dealing with anxiety. Like she feels like she can, she can do something about that. But when he's depressed, he spends days in bed. And I think Mina ends up feeling pretty helpless about that. It doesn't seem to matter what she says or does. Like he just cannot get out of bed. And that's when I hear her resentment really start to build. I think deep down... She's truly feeling helpless or useless, right? Like she, she feels like she can't do enough. Maybe maybe powerless is even a good word. But rather than feel those feelings, she tends to turn against him. She morphs it into anger toward her husband. And then she'll call me and she tells me things like, you know, he's not even trying. He's being a baby. He's just being lazy. And I think it's just easier for her to get mad at him than to sit with the powerlessness of the whole thing. It's too hard to accept that you're just powerless, right? It's easier to accept, no, 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 we have power here. There is something we could be doing. He's just not doing it. You know, the the message of, well, he's just being a jerk is actually more comfortable as a storyline in her head than the message, there's nothing I can do to help him. Oftentimes I try to remind her that his depression is not an attack on her. 
He's not in bed to piss her off. And I think we could use this story as an analogy for a myriad of other situations. Your daughter, who just started using drugs again after being sober for four months, she's not doing that to make you mad. That's not an attack on you. Your father, who just started smoking again, he's not smoking to hurt you. It may hurt you, but that's not the purpose. Your sister, who has ADHD, you know, she's not late to dinner to piss you off. She just has really bad executive functioning. Your friend who cancels plans at the last minute because she's battling anxiety. Your friend's really hoping you'll understand. This is not uh, a sign of disrespect. And look, you can be hurt. You can be annoyed. You can be disappointed. You can be frustrated. Your feelings are valid. But don't let those feelings confuse your reality. I wonder if you can learn to say to yourself, just because I'm disappointed that our wedding anniversary dinner got ruined does not mean that my spouse is being cruel. Or just because I'm annoyed that my friend is late for the movie does not necessarily mean she's disrespecting me and my time. Folks, I'm not asking you to put up with mistreatment or abuse. I'm not asking you to make excuses for people, especially since you won't always know what people are struggling with. Unfortunately, we live in a world where people don't feel comfortable talking about these conditions. So you may not always realize that someone has a condition like anxiety or ADHD or depression or whatever the case may be. I'm just asking you to remain flexible with your perspective to the extent that you are able to do so. Be flexible before you jump to conclusions. Keep an open mind. And it's not just kind of you to do that for the benefit of your loved ones. It's actually healthier for you. Chances are you are surrounded with people who are struggling with things. The people in your life are very likely dealing with substance use, anxiety, depression, ADHD, trauma, panic attack, stress, grief, whatever the case may be. And you can spend your life mad at everybody for not healing as fast as you wanted them to. Or you can maintain some flexibility in your mind. And I suspect a little flexibility might afford you some peace and hopefully a lot less resentment. Thanks, folks. Since that day I live in